morning. Welcome to CiviCon Denver. Uh, I'm Dave Schaefer. I'm the co-founder and CTO of Back Office Thinking. And with me today is uh, Anum Gol. She's a senior consultant and technical lead uh, with us and does a lot of Civi development uh, for us. So what I want to talk about today is something that we've done recently with trying to get the capabilities for end users to do partial payments exposed on the front end from Civi CRM. So currently, partial payments are supported through the back end. It's part of Civi Core. There's a UI for it. Um, but there's nothing created that allows front-end users to be able to do that. Um, there's a lot of challenges and opportunities in trying to do that. There are some other alternatives, but kind of in, in our work, we've gone down the path of building something that sits alongside Civi, and uh, you know, we'd like to see this solution kind of move more and more into something that's you know, uh, within the Civi core or very tightly uh, coupled with it through an extension. And I'm going to go through a couple of ways that we've uh, dealt with that in the past. So a little homage to uh, since the new trailers for the new Star Wars or uh, yeah, new Star Wars have been coming out. Um, actually, it was in 2010 that we first got involved in dealing with partial payments on the front end uh, with Civi. It was 2010. It was Civi 3.3, and it was our first Civi implementation. I'm not quite sure. My partner is sitting in the back. It was probably his idea that we do this because it probably wouldn't have been mine. But um, you know, it was it was our first Civi implementation, and uh, we got involved with working with the United Methodist Conferences, you know, which is basically kind of like a, a chapter-based organization. The, the conference is a collection of churches, and those churches get you know cooperative. They they pay cooperatively for things to the conference, and they get cooperative services from the conference. So they have things that they need. They're required to pay back to the conference. They're, as you can imagine, they're not the best payers. So they don't pay the same amount every month. They skip months. They do all kinds of various things. So at the time in 3.3, there wasn't the kind of developed extension architecture that there is today. But there was a framework for which you could create a component which actually looked in, and acted the same way as the other core Civi, Civi components worked. So it worked similar to events or to um, uh, contributions and it had kind of the same framework. So we kind of looked at that and said, all right, well, I think we can use that as a basis for building some fu extended functionality into Civi. So we kind of had a couple of problems. It's like one is how do you record what it is that somebody is, needs to pay? And then how do you get a UI for them to, to pay that information? And that was actually a problem both on the front end and on the back end. But what we, what we did is we kind of combined the UI and we make the same UI available on the front end as on the back end. So the admins can go in and they can, if somebody sends them a check, they can go in and, and divvy up the check on the back end the same way as if somebody was doing a front end payment. Um, so we wanted to build support primarily for check and ACH. In the United Methodist organization, the amounts that the conferences are paying are pretty large. So the idea of them paying this by credit card was really a negative because the fees would be just kind of crushing uh, as far as overall donations would go. So we, as part of this, we also did a payment processor with Vanco Services so that we could do ACH um, as well on the front end. The, the basic arrangement of this was that we built a custom table that was part of our component, and that was the thing that we used to kind of store the information that kept track of um, what financial transaction paid for what part of the pledge and what contribution it was associated with. So we simply call it the thing called the AR distribution table. And it's currently in use. Well, we have one conference that recently went away. They changed their whole platform. But it's currently still in use uh, with one of the other conferences that we developed it for. So, oh, let me get back. So, this is probably a little hard to read because there's a lot of information. But this is the typical problem we are trying to solve. You know, you have many items. And this is actually you know, not the most number of items that somebody might have that they're paying on. Um, and so basically, you have kind of the, the, the fund or the um, contribution type that they're, they're paying against, the amount, the total amount that they owe, the amount that's kind of allocated to be paid monthly, you know, what they've paid so far. 
And then in this particular instance, you know, there's an option. You, do, you can click on these links and it'll add the full invoice amount or they can put in the amount that they want to pay. They can also kind of define what, what year they're paying it in um, and then what the max payment amount that they can make. Because, like, you know, these were, you know, the, or, the, the people working this on the other end you know, in the church organizations and so forth, they wanted to kind of really make it possible so that they weren't going to make mistakes and they were going to get the payments to the conference the way that they wanted them to, because if they were wrong, then there was a lot of manual effort involved in trying to get it corrected and get everything allocated appropriately. So if, this is just a static shot. So this would just total up at the bottom. You'd, you'd get the total of what you're paying, and you can also add more payments to it um, uh, if you want to. So that there are a lot of times they have a lot of elective funds that people give to different appeals that they run throughout the year. So the church could choose to hit that drop down and, and get additional information about what they're going to pay. So this is another version of the same thing, except you can see there's much less information on it. So they, it's, this conference decided you know they just wanted to keep it simpler and basic, um, and you know make it make it just make it work at the time. So what did we learn? The big thing that we found when we were started, when we were thinking about this process and what we were going to do now, is that there's always a lot of variability in the types of payments that are being made. You know, every different organization has different things that they pay for. They want to keep track of them differently in the back end. Um, they want the user experience of what people can pay and how much to be very different. So, the concept of trying to manage all of that in a monolithic um, solution didn't make a lot of sense and you know you want to be you want this thing to be variable so there is kind of like a there is kind of like a strong separation between how you're going to collect the information and then how you need to process it to make the payment information all line up correctly within civi so and during the whole time that we were doing all this work with the united methodist conferences all the financial uh capabilities in CIVI were maturing and the partial payment capabilities was kind of really being built out. So we got to this point with another client um, earlier at the end of last year that you know really needed this kind of capability. We work with a number of organizations, camping organizations and you know mission trip type organizations where it's kind of a multi-stage process that you that they want to go through in the payment process. So we didn't want to kind of replicate the same model that we had done, but we wanted to try and take advantage of the um, partial payment capabilities that had been built into CIVI and kind of get them extended into the front end so that we could kind of come up with a solution that other organizations could use. Um, and that's why I call it a framework, because it's not an out of the box, well, here you install this extension and boom, you get a page. It's really just a framework. So. Um, since there were no front-end features available um, and it worked primarily with events and it worked for contrib contributions in special status cases, um, we kind of moved forward with an, with an approach to split the two pieces of functionality up. So I'll show you a little demo of uh, what we've done for Round Lake Camp. So Round Lake Camp offers camping experiences uh, primarily for, for kids. And the model is basically that a parent is coming here and they're, they're registering their, their kids for camp. So this is kind of the dashboard page that a parent would see. And you know, they get a, on the, the high level, they get to see you know, what their household members are and what things they've um, uh, registered their people for. And I forgot to do one thing, which is plug in my laptop. So you can see, and this we've done, this UI we've done here just with, with views. So you can see that they have two, two kids registered for two different camps and their payment status, you know, they have one that's pending from pay later and one that's, that's partially paid. So in this case, when they register their kids for camp, all the, the registrations are done as pay later. So no, no money is collected when they do the first registration. So they, they can sign up and then they get 
they, get, they manage their payment process through this dashboard. So they have a, a submit payment button that then gives them a screen, you know, a little bit similar to what we showed in some of the other examples. You know, they've got the two different events that they're registered for, who their registrants are, what the costs are, you know, how much they've paid to date, you know, how much is remaining, um, and they can go ahead and they can make a payment. And so say I wanted to do $100 on this one, and let's say I'm only going to do 30 on here. And then right now they're only accepting credit card. There you go, I exceeded my, oh, I thought that was $181. Oh, yeah. And I think I might have double, let me double click on it. Okay, all right, so it did take it. So now you can see, like that first one that was um, only pay later, it's now shown as partially paid, and the last one is still uh, partially paid. I guess I could have paid it in full to show a little different uh, change in that. So, um, so in this case, what we just went through, the payment page is one extension, right, and then the process for getting all the partial payments distributed is uh, a second extension. And I'm going to switch back and let uh, Anum here tell you more about how we did this. Now, unfortunately, Anum has the, the dubious honor of, as being one of our tech leads, she gets to actually figure out how to do all the things that I look at the code and say, yeah, I think this is a good idea and this is possible. Now, please go ahead and make it happen. <laughs> okay. so. Uh, hello, everybody. I am Anam Goyal. I'll be covering the technical details of these, this implementation. So let's proceed and start with the approach which we took. CVCM introduced partial payments for backend users. And when we started designing this implementation, we had two main objectives. Our first objective was to make it available for the front end users. So for that, we had to come up with some kind of custom user interface. And our second objective was to enable the front end users to add multiple partial payments for multiple event registrations at once. So that required some kind of customization over the core uh, CV partial payment process. So we came up with this approach of developing it as a two-step process. So that involved creating two separate CV extensions. First was the user interface extension, and the second extension is the partial payment extension. So we came up with this approach for the reason that we could make the process more modular so that it is reusable. Which this process also provides flexibility around the design because user interface extension is completely different, is independent of the partial payment process. So that gives the users ability to create their own user interface, come up with their own design, and they just need to use the partial payment extension for processing the payments. So before getting into the details of these two extensions, I would like to walk you all through the process of this implementation uh, with the help of the sequence diagram. As you see, there are four main components in this uh, diagram, the web page, user interface extension, partial payments extension, and the database. The first section is when user requests for the web form, which displays the payment details. 
that invokes the user interface extension to make few database calls to fetch the event registration data. In our particular use case, we had to get the event registrations for the logged in user as well as the related contacts of the user. That can be the spouse or the children. So that, with the help of that data, user interface extension is going to render the form with the payment options. Then in the second section, user is going to fill out the payment details and the amount he wants to pay and submit the form. This will, and after this, user interface extension is going to invoke the payment processor. Right now, we are using the default payment processor, which is defined in the backend of Civi. So that payment processor is invoked, and the total and a payment is made to the processor for the total amount user is paying. After that, uh, this extension creates a new record in the financial transaction table for the total amount user has paid, and then comes the partial payment extension wherein the user interface extension has to call this process partial payments function, which is defined in the partial payment extension. This function is nothing but a iteration around the event registrations which user is paying for. And there are three, three basic steps in this function. First is, uh, this, this code has to update the contribution status from pending to partially paid if it is not already. Second is, it has to update the participant status from pending to partially paid, and then it calls the core function of Civi record additional payment, which actually processes the partial payments and adds financial transactions for those partial payments in database. Uh, this function returns the financial transaction IDs, and that, uh, that ID is used to return the process payments back to user interface extension, which can use that data to display the success or error message to the user. So this is how the process works. We recently tested both of our extensions in 4.6. We have to upgrade our user interface extension because we are, we are using some credit card display uh, functions which are not compatible 4.6. But we did some stub testing uh, for the partial payment extension, and, and that works. Yep. So you can use your own user interface for 4.6 and use this partial payment extension for the backend processing. Yep. That will work. So what, where we started was when we saw, when, we, when the partial payments functionality was came into being, we kind of looked in the code and said, try to work through, all right, what, what's the highest level that we can get to that there's something that we can call to make this happen, right? And that's the, that's the one function that Anum mentioned for adding the partial payments. Um, what we actually found out in doing the work was that that was insufficient. Like, there are other rules that surround that process, and we had to kind of, we, so we embedded those in the extension. Um, so in the basic testing that we've done so far in 4.6, it, appear, it appears that those rules are still the same, but I think that's the one risk um, because we don't, it would be nice if those rules were encapsulated in something else that was part of core so we didn't have to do it in the extension. But, you know, so far it seems like we don't have any issues in 4.6. Now getting into details of the user interface extension. As we mentioned, this extension was completely designed on the basis of requirements which we had for our client. But it can be customized. So there are certain things which we did with our extension which we would like to share with you. The first is, with the help of this extension, we are adding a new component in CVCRM. So this extension has its own DAO file, form files, and template file. So we, have, we had to display event registrations for the, use, for the logged in users and the related contacts. So all those uh, functions we wrote in the DAO files to get the data and then pre-process of the form uses that to render the form. The status of these registrations should, uh, should be either partially paid or pending from pay later. The reason we are showing pending from pay later payments are most of the front end users are going to enter event registrations from the from online form. And you just have two options, either you're paying the full amount or you can pay later. So we wanted to enable our users to start paying the paying for the event registrations which are in pending state. Yeah. So that's why we are showing two uh, type of registrations. One thing that was kind of critical there, and that's kind of why we've gone down this path, is, is in the previous um, presentation, the guys from the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, they were, they were showing in their registration model, you had a price set option to pick you know, a, de a deposit or pay the full amount. You know, but then you have to have a bunch of rules on the back end that then control that. This, for our client, this was much cleaner for them. They, didn't, they weren't so concerned about getting any amount of money up front. They were concerned about um, their end users getting through the registration process and then you know, eventually completing the payment process by the event due date. And 
this uh, extension uses a default payment processor, adds calls do direct payment method to add a, uh, add a payment to the processor, and then it, it, it adds financial transaction records in the back end. Another one thing which needs to be done here before making these calls, like adding a new payment to the, to the processor or adding a new uh, entry to the, to the financial transaction table is we should be just validating whether the contribution ID, we have access to contribution ID or no. Because when this extension is going to make a call to partial payment extension and contribution ID is not there, then partial payments are not going to be processed. In that case, you'll be just having a financial transaction entry which is not valid and then you have already submitted a payment to the processor. So that cannot be undone, so just to make sure the contribution ID is there. So partial payment extension. We just added a one, one function in this extension, which is just a wrapper around the core function, record additional payment. So this uh, function requires two kind of parameters. One is the payment processor param parameters, and other is the participant information parameters. I'll be covering these two parameters on my next slide. Uh, before making a call to the core function, we had to make sure that uh, the status of contribution is partially paid because the core function just processes the participants and contributions which are in partially paid status. So we had to use a DO function to update the contribution status because API uh, call or the DO function does not allow changing the status of a contribution directly from pending to uh, partially paid. But for participant, it was pretty simple. We could just do it uh, with a DO function. And then after the core function is called, it returns the financial transaction ID. If that is correct, then we are to the second parameter, which is the participant information array. We are, we are passing a flag for the success or failure of the payment. And that can be used by the user interface extension to display the error messages. Now these are the two parameters which are required by the partial payment extension. First is the payment processor parameter. The user interface extension calls do direct payment method to add the payment to the, uh, to the payment processor. So the same parameter set has to be sent to this uh, partial payment extension. The second participant information array is an associative array where the key is the participant ID and the, and the values can be the contact ID, contribution ID, and then there's a flag for pay later, whether the, whether the status of, the, of this participant is pending or partially paid. And the last one, that's the amount which user wants to pay for that particular uh, participant record. This is an example. And you see 20, 27 is the participant ID and uh, co contact ID, contribution ID values are passed. And pay later is zero. So that means the status of this participant record is already partially paid. And user is going to pay $1.5 for this one. Second one, uh, pay later is one, so that means it's a pending payment. We have to first change the status. But since partial payment pays blank, so that means user is not opting to pay anything for this, so, so code is going to skip this one. So is this extension perfect? No, we have some improvements which we want to make. Like we want to improvise on our error handling. Right now we are just sending one flag, uh, whether the payment was successfully processed or no. I think we can add some enhancements, like we can send the, the reason why it failed, or some which, which can be used by the user interface extension to uh, process the errors in a better way. And secondly, the partial payment extension is very participant specific as of now. Um, and, but the core function, the record additional payment, that for that function, participant ID is optional. So we think that we can make it more generic so that any contributions in CV which are in pending status maybe from membership, recurring contribution, or participants should be, able, should be processed from this extension. So all the development for these two extensions was done in 4.5.4, to be precise. And then we recently tested, as I mentioned, that we did some stub testing for partial payment extension, and that worked. So we think you can use it for 4.5 and 4.6, both. And we have already released it on GitHub. This is the download link. And I think our presentation is also available on our sessions page, so you can get access to the URL from there. So I think that concludes our presentation. We hope this was helpful. Thank you. And we are open for discussion. Yeah. So I think um, you know, kind of our approach with coming here today was kind of kind of get this out here and start kind of thinking about it and moving it forward, um, making it available for other folks to work with. The, you know, one of the challenges that I see in, the, in this whole process is that 
you kind of have a chicken and an egg condition where you need to know that the financial side, the credit card or the ACH or something was done successfully, and then you need to distribute those funds, which is kind of differently than the way it's architected on the CIVI backend, where basically you, you're going to a specific item and you're doing a partial payment by a credit card, so it's a one-to-one. -one. So if the financial part fails, you don't do the second part. I guess there's still some opportunity for the credit card part to fail, but the, the partial payment update to fail, I'm not sure that that's that's probably a lower risk. But in this scenario, you know, somebody's making a payment for $500 across five uh, different items. You've already collected that $500. Well, what happens if those five, those five payments don't get properly distributed through the, the partial payment mechanism? We don't have a good answer for that, other than to say, as we're iterating through each one, to flag it as to which ones were successful and which ones failed. Um, but then they're still kind of like, all right, well, what do you even do with that at that point? Is there, you know, what's, is there some kind of manual recovery that would need to happen? And we don't have enough experience with it at this point to know if that's even, you know, a really viable concern. Um, I will say the client we did it for is, is extremely happy. Um, the big thing that it did for them was it, it really drastically reduced the amount of manual registrations that they were processing. Um, they're getting, you know, probably what is it, 80 to 90 percent of their registrations for their uh, camps online, which is, you know, made their back-end staff ecstatic. Um, and it all seems to be working well financially, and users understand it, the transactions work. So, you know, we hope that at least the, uh, the part for managing the partial payments is something that, we, that people can start to use and, and take forward. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.